to know and I would like to share some ideas about how to use the bow on the double bass in jazz music. The bow brings a lot of opportunities, I think. You can play long notes like a horn player does. You can play all kinds of effects, slides, vibrato. You can use dynamics real well. Play very soft and very loud. You can play fast, and while well, fast playing may not be the most important thing, but still, if you look at uh, the symphonic classical repertoire, well, fast passages are very common, so why not use this in jazz too? And of course, practicing with the bow is great for uh, improving your intonation. Mastering your bowing skills uh, takes a lot of practice. So maybe uh, if you just uh, started up with uh, using the bow, you may think it, this tutorial is a little bit too uh, difficult, but uh, still I hope to, uh, to help you to find the right direction in using the bow in jazz. One of the main issues is um, how to swing. Uh, with this bow, how to get a nice jazz rhythm, the syncopation right. So if you uh, are more of a classical trained bass player, um, really try to avoid to play accents on the beat. If we have a scale of the C major chord in jazz, so if you maybe you've noticed, I put in an extra chromatic note. The A flat, that's the scale we normally use. So if you play the classical way, you and, and you divide it in groups of two eight notes. Da -dum, da -dum, the accent on the beat. But if you would play it more in a jazz manner, you would get more of this. So what am I doing? I'm just reversing the bow direction. So uh, 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 then switch bow direction off beat. This can really help to improve your uh, jazz phrasing uh, with the bow. Uh, back to this uh, Take the A Train, the Billy Strayhorn classic. Uh, if we have the intro, <laughs> sounds like a glissando, but actually it is. for ear training, uh, practice this slow and then finally you can maybe use this also in your improvisation, this scale. Uh, then we go on to the A part of the song, it starts off with the G and we don't need vibrato on the first, on the first uh, note, so just why make it hard on ourselves, just take an open string. Okay, anybody, anybody can do that. And I'm staying on the G string, on the one string, and that is for a reason, because if you uh, switch in position, uh, sounds better, I think, in jazz than, than changing string, because you have all unnecessary sound, it's more difficult. Also for intonation, not so hard, this that's doable. Um, and then um, the next phrase, again, the direction of the bow, so I uh, switch bow direction. Uh, well, for now, let's
I skip the B part and go to uh, kind of a special chorus. Originally, this is another key, it's modulated, but we stay in the key of C. So these nice accents you can play. And then we get the chromatic scale. Again, great for daily practice origination. Listen to every note very carefully. solo is always very uh, a great idea to uh, to think of uh, rather rhythmic phrases jazz phrases than of as a starting point than thinking of harmonic possibilities as a starting point of course you have to know which notes you can play but uh, if you keep in mind the, the the rhythmical phrase it will keep your ideas fresh so um, uh, then, well, uh, you've accompanied uh, the trumpet player, the saxophone solo, the piano solo, etc. Then finally, it's your turn as a bassist to, to uh, play a solo. And um, what happens? People tend to run for the bar for a beer when the bass solo starts. Well, we are going to avoid that, of course. We have our secret weapon, the bow. And if you start off with a long note, maybe you grab the tension of the audience immediately. If you play some da, bure, bure, le, uh, different sound, different color, maybe that's a, that's a nice way to start a solo and then going from there. Okay, I'll pick it up eight bars before the solo uh, to um, uh, just play some, uh, some rocking bass and uh, then, uh, okay, go for it. subject playing with the bow on the double bass next time thank you very much for watching